hello Donna Cato here welcome to my channel and welcome to my studio now I just finished off uh, for the last two days making in a studio session which means I just start and I just go and you see what happens anyway I made this necklace so that studio session actually started with uh, a brief about making these canes, which I call Starry Night Canes. And then I proceeded to make beads and make this. And, and then I took you through to the end where, uh, you know, it's a little problematic when you're working with a shape like this in a necklace. So anyway, we went through the whole thing and, and that I'm getting together and that will of course be up on the site. But in the process of making this and making these canes, I realized just how much I really like them. Now, I call them Starry Night Canes. And if you have my book, then you're familiar with them um, because I've got basically a whole chapter devoted to them, Starry Night Canes. So here's a whole chapter. And once you make these canes, you can also of course, make things like pins and anyway, so I'm going to take you through the process of making canes like this and jelly rolls and things like that. Um, more pins, another pin. So you can see that, um, well, I really like them. And this book was published in 2009 and I don't think I've made very many since then. So. I've been having a great time. And so I decided that I would do Starry Night Canes and that I would actually go through and make some other projects, pins and whatever we happen to make out of them. But starting with a studio session is kind of an interesting idea, but I, I would like to go more in depth about the actual making of the base Starry Night Canes, okay? Because a cane like this is, becomes the basis for making a lot of different canes that have patterns. I think I'll show you if I can find a good example. So, no, that's pretty random, that one. But if you look at these, there are definite patterns. This is a V. It's harder to see in some of them, but you, what I do with these is I take something that's very random like this, and by cutting it and re, uh, putting them together again, uh, you can make uh, patterns. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's get started. I'm gonna set these aside. Okay. So those are set aside. I'm going to make more. Now, I don't know what your studio setup looks like, but I use this tray currently. Uh, I'm telling you, my the way I work seems to change, but this seems to be working well for me. It's a, a half size baking tray. And, um, when I'm working, I, I kind of throw things that I'm making when I stop using them. I'll just throw them on here. So one thing about all of these colors on this tray is that they're all conditioned. They've all been conditioned, okay? They've been used, ooh, this one has liquid clay on it. So I gotta find out what's happening there. Anyway, and some are, this was part of a very, very large cane but I, I tend to put them here. Now I'm going to start picking from this tray of conditioned bits and pieces and Skinner blends and things like that because that's what I'm going to use as a foundation for these. So this is a really good way of going through your scrap bin or scrap bag and selecting things that you think would go together to make a Starry Night cane. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull, start pulling all these kind of turquoisey colors and 
these warm greens and all of this comes together. I may have to make something else. Let's just take that little cane. Maybe, oops, I've got a little hair there. I'll take this one too. So there's an awful lot of this green. So it this finished cane could end up being either look more green or look more blue. If I wanted it to be decidedly more tealy blue, then you know what? I have to take a lot more of this. Now this is not a teal blue, it's the turquoise, but I can use that. And then I will introduce a little more blue into the mix. So this is one. Now let's take these reds, all of these reds. I'm gonna take that one too. Take this red orange cane. I'm gonna take this, it's got a bit of yellow to it. Now this is some scrap from the actual studio session. I will throw that in. If I want a little more light, I'm gonna take this guy, throw this in. And if I want to increase the volume, perhaps I should add, oh, maybe I'll just add some more of this. Okay, so that's a second one. Now I'd like to have a more yellow cane, so I'm gonna have to mix yellow for myself. And maybe I will get make one that's more orange. So I'm going to have to add more bits to this pile to make more orange. Now let's make a lime green. So lime green, I'm gonna add this, it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna add a bit of this. I'm gonna add some of this, it's got some of the yellow in it. You know what, I think I'll add some of this kind of dull, this more dull color. So I'll put a little bit of that in. And you know what, do I want some very dark bits? Maybe just a few, not too many. Okay. I'm gonna add more line. I really like that color. All right, so that's just an example of how this gets started and how I sort of pile the colors that I want together. And it's a very random process. Let me put some of that in. So I introduce some of that light color and I'm going to return this to where it was. I can still make more. All right. Now I use a food processor. You don't need to use a food processor, but if you happen to have, like I have a little Oscar, something like that, then you might want to just use that. It certainly is faster. But if you don't have one, well, let's start with the turquoise. I think I'm going to have to add more blue. Uh, you can actually just take a blade and start chopping and chopping and chopping. Now, trust me, this kind of chopping can get really tedious, really tedious. But if you don't have a food processor for your clay, it's what you will have to do. Now I'm making a very, it's gonna be a fairly large cane. So, you know, as you start, maybe the first ones you make are not quite so big, which will also make it easier if you're just having to chop like this. If you really like this technique and you like this cane, then maybe you start looking at the resale shops for somebody's cast off little Oscar. I don't even know if they make little Oscars anymore. Anyway, so you just chop, 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 chop until the bits are pretty small. All right, so I'm not gonna chop because I 
happen to have a little Oscar. It's a really old little Oscar, but it works. So let me grab the bowl and I will be back. All right, so here's my little Oscar and you can see that it's quite messy. And one of the reasons why it's so messy and kind of sticky in spots is that for many years I did, when necessary, uh, condition my clay with it. I would put bits like this of hard clay, unconditioned hard clay, and then I would take liquid clay and drizzle it in, and oh my God, sticky mess. Well, now that we have our conditioning bar, I don't have to do that. So the good news is I won't be putting much more liquid clay in little Oscar. Okay, so here we have the chopped up clay. Now, because I have sort of pre-chopped it like this, in order to get to the point where all of these are tiny bits of clay, separate, but you know, tiny bits of color, you can do this so much, you either cure or cook the clay because of the heat, or you've mixed it so fine that basically you're mixing it to one color. So you wanna keep the, the bits kind of separated like this. You don't want to mix to a uniform color. Not a tragedy if you do, but that's not our goal here. So let me put these little bits in my little Oscar. And I'm going to take, I'm not gonna bring the base. Well, maybe I should, okay. I'm gonna bring the base of the machine over here. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Me and Oscar. You can see how old it is. I mean, it's ancient. I don't think I ever used it for food. I think I just bought it for clay. All right, so I'm gonna take the bowl and I'm just going to lock it on. Sometimes this is the hardest part. It should just drop in. Oh, oh, there it dropped. It's probably best to put the bowl on before you put the bits in because what the heck. The process of putting the bowl on, I think maybe it pushed the blade up a bit. So what I'm gonna do is make sure it's really down there at the base. Okay. Well, Oscar's pretty low tech. So here we go. Now I'm gonna swing this around and I'm gonna start with maybe five quick pulses. And by quick pulses, I mean this. And you don't wanna continuously run it. Okay, so you see what little Oscar did to the bits. They're still pretty big. Let's try five more. Little Oscar's doing his thing, but we're still a little bit quick. Okay, that time I went 10. Let's see what we've got. This is looking really good to me. This looks good. Now, because so many of the coats, there's not a ton of contrast between the various blues and the green. So you don't wanna make the bits too small. But as it turned out for me, I had to do 20 this time. 20. Okay, now let's remove. Let me put the last one on the floor. There you go, buddy. And let's, let's just dump all this out. Okay, so I just dumped it all out. And amazingly, little Oscar, this plastic has withstood ooh, 25 years of polymer clay swirling around the bowl. 
I'd say that's pretty good. Let's get some of the bits out of the top. Okay. Let's set this aside. Now, our bits. That's too big a bit. That didn't make it through Oscar, so let me just take that and make it smaller. And remember, all the clay has to be conditioned. You can't just take clay off of a block and process it. What you will have is a dry kind of mess where all the little bits are trying to separate. They do not want to stick together. Okay, but once you get them conditioned, then they're sort of sticky on the surface and they're more willing to stick to each other. And that's what you want. I mean, if you get dry, dry bits in, you'll know it because they'll start peeling off. They do not want to stick to each other. All right, so I've formed sort of a rough rectangle. Let me move this down. Now I'm gonna take my acrylic rod, smooth it. Now, if you want like turquoise, I would say probably, mm, or if you want a predominant color, like this is gonna be predominantly turquoise, I hope. Um, I think you want maybe 50 to 75% of that base color. And then you can add these other bits and pieces. That will create that kind of nice texture or stripes in the loaf. Good news is once you get something like Little Oscar to help you out, the process becomes so simple. You can just whip these canes out as long as you have these conditioned pieces to chop up. Okay. Now I'm using my clay, of course, Cato Poly clay. It is a stiffer clay. I have never run anything soft through my little Oscar. So if you were using a very soft clay, you'd probably roll or pulse fewer times. Otherwise, you're going to get gush. Otherwise, maybe the bits become way too small for you. So uh, I can't really tell you what's going to happen there. Wish I could, but I can't. So I'm going to take this and roll it through my pasta machine on the thickest setting. And, you know, I'm going to make it long like this. I'm going to put this edge on the rollers. Okay, buddy. Little thick. Little thick. Okay, now I'm going to cut it in half, as close as I can to half, and I'm going to scoot one side over to the other. Sometimes I fold it in half. Uh, I'm not sure it makes that much difference. Okay, so let's cut these off. They will probably find their way into another Starry Night cane. You know what? I'm just going to jam a little bit of clay there. Take a little bit and put it there. Let's flip it over and take a look. And I'll put a little bit here. All right, so let's roll that through again. Same way, same way. Let me see what we have so far. It's just like chunky bits of color. Hello. Hello. 
You can do it. Ta-da. Okay, cutting it in half again. Swing it over. Cut the end off. I'm going to put more here. Ta-da. And these are the pieces I'm cutting off. So, you remember what it looked like before. Chunky bits. Chunky, chunky bits. Well, they're still pretty chunky, but now they're less chunky than they were. Now, let's take a look at the other side. Well, these are chunky bits, but they're longer. And doesn't that make sense? Because I'm rolling through this way. So the chunky bits are going like this on this edge. Just, just like a little bit. But the chunky bits on this side are going, woo, they're stretching out. So by always rolling the same direction, this edge is always on the rollers, you develop long a long stringy side and a shorter choppier side. So you have two options when you start making your canes. Short and chunky, and I'll give you an example here. Shorter and chunkier, slightly stretched out. But look what happened here, woo, stretched out. Okay, let's do this again. You can do it, you can do it, I know. My machine is saying, I don't really wanna do it. Because even though the clay is conditioned, it's not what you would call soft. Okay, so let's do this again. Whoops. Boy, I really did not do a good job cutting. Hmm. Okay. All right, so chunky bits. Stretched out bits. Now, I'm not going to do any more because, look, it's getting pretty, pretty chopped up, chunky and pretty. Yep, not going to do it anymore. So now let's turn this into a slab. I'm going to cut it in half, move one half over the other, like so. And I think this time I'm going to make it square. And I'm bringing that one over here. Or square-ish. It's actually square here, but it isn't square here. So that's the stringy long side, and this is the chunky side. Okay, I can use either side as a foundation for these other canes that we will make. I like it, I like it. So I had made this one before and it's very much the same, except that I think I rolled through an extra time here. So I will probably end up using, I would say this side because if I'm making a pattern using this, uh, I think it will be easier to see if I use the stretched outside. All right. So that, in a nutshell, is how these things are made. Now, this will be incorporated probably into another cane. So I would say if you're interested in making any of these Starry Night canes with me later, just, you know, go through. If you have a few spare moments and you don't know what you want to do, maybe you've come down to your studio and you don't know what you want to do exactly, well, just grab, go into your scrap bag and try to make a, a little Starry Night cane. It might give you a jump start to your day in your studio. And in the process, you will make something that I will teach you how to 
cane later. All right, so that's it for this session. I hope um, I have cleared up some things about making the Starry Night canes that we will be making soon. Um, I can't think of anything else. It's not a terribly complicated process, but you know what? I really like the way they look. And um, honestly, since I had made, I had written the book in 2009, I'm not exactly sure I've even really done this since then. Just get caught up in other things and sometimes you just forget how much you enjoy or you like or you like something so I'm really looking forward to exploring more of Starry Night Canes and teaching them to you all right so I'm Donna Cato thank you for watching uh if you liked um or learned anything then I hope you will subscribe and push the like button I try to get classes up every Wednesday uh, I don't always make it but I do try now, one thing I did want to talk about really quickly, if you'd care to listen, is where, um, you know, this notion of taking clay and chopping it up and putting it back together, that really wasn't my notion. I believe, you know, it, I've been doing this for 30 years and I can't exactly remember, but I think the first time I saw this kind of technique where you just chop up different colors of clay and then you jam them together and you make a loaf not starry night but you just make a loaf and then use those chopped up what you cut off that has all these different bits and pieces of clay i think that the first time i saw that might have been karen lewis uh she goes by the name of clue professionally and i believe it was karen lewis but i also think sarah shriver did it and some of you might be new or fairly new to polymer clay, so maybe maybe these names don't mean anything to you at this point. But when you have worked with clay for as long as I have, um, uh, I remember where things came from many times, or almost remember. I try very hard not to forget. And so it's important because I know and because I remember that I let you know because the last 30 years in polymer clay has been a real journey of discovery. It's been what the techniques you use today that you see all over came from somewhere. And many times the people who worked so hard to develop them are not recognized. And I feel that that's really not right. So in my classes, if I have learned something from someone else, I always try, I try my best to let you know where these techniques came from. It's called attribution and it's important. Everybody doesn't do it, but um, I think it's just the right thing to do. Okay, so Having said that, I'm going to make more and then I'm going to start working on these different canes to show you. So, thanks for watching and uh, until we meet again. Bye. Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. So glad you're here to watch this little tutorial. Now, in another tutorial, I taught you how to make this. This is just the foundation for for a series of Starry Night Canes. Um, and if you have my book, you'll know that there's a chapter devoted to this technique. I really like it a lot. Um, my book was published in 2009. I don't think I've made many of them since then. You know, one of the nice things about doing this YouTube channel and wanting to put up content is that I revisit some things that I had almost forgotten about. And let me tell you, the Starry Night Canes are something that I had just about forgotten about. And um, it's kind of a shame because I really like them a lot. So, now, this is your basic Starry Night Cane. And in the studio session, if you've watched that, 
of course it might not be up yet. I have just simply used them as they are. For instance, I believe this, this came off of here. So you don't have to change these. You can use them the way that they are. But the subject of this particular tutorial is taking this very basic cane and turning it into something else. Once again, if you just use it the way it is, then you can do things like this. There's absolutely no need or requirement to change them. All right, so let's get started. So, uh, as a recap, when you make these canes, you're going to find that one side, one face, is rather chopped up looking, short strokes, shots of color. Well, there's another side that could also be the face of the cane where you've got these long stripes, okay? So each one is like that. Here's the choppy side. Here's the long stripey side. And of course, the sides are pretty much nothing. So your concern are the are two the two sides that we would consider faces. This and this. Here we go. Here's another. This choppy and then the stripey long striped side. Okay, so you can decide which you're going to use when you make these canes. Now, the first thing I'm going to make is called a tile cane. So for this, I'm going to use the stripey side. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is stand the cane. For, see, it's square. I cut it square. This is also square, so I could use either side. But I choose this time to use the long stripey side. Now I'm going to take my blade and cutting from corner to corner like this, I'm going to use the Sandra Macaw walk down the side method where you look to the right, you cut a bit, then you look to the left, you cut, and I'm cutting right along the corner. Okay, so I'm going to do this rather slowly. And it's important that you use a rigid blade, not a blade that is flexible. If you use a flexible blade, you're going to be sorry. Okay, why are you going to be sorry? Because that blade is going to torque and twist through this much clay. And you will not cut straight through. It's hard enough when the blade is rigid to cut straight through. I mean, the clay at times seems to want to grab it and pull it uh, from the middle out. So... Do yourself a favor, use a nice, thick clay blade, not one of those skinny, flexi blades. All right, so I have cut this in half. Now I'm just gonna pivot this so that the cut is vertical. The next thing you have to do, and this is easier if you do not lift this off your table, leave it just like that. That cut is perpendicular to your body. Separate and pivot. Like that, okay? Just pivot it like that. So one side has its back against the side of another. This would be, well, I think you understand. Just try to do it that way. I think you'll be happier. Now, this is rather short, and I have to cut this in half again. So because it's short, you know what? I'm just going to take a little time at this point and reduce it a bit. I don't always do this, but you know what? I think I'm always kind of thinking I should have. So just take your time, just pull it out. Not sure what that bill is. Okay, so I'm just going to reduce it like this. This is not a race, I'm just
trying to increase the length this way. And I just keep moving from one side to the next and pushing in and pulling in certain spots just to try to get it moving. Now, I probably could have reduced it when it was square and cut it corner to corner. Much harder to do, of course, the taller it is. So you're going to end up doing something to lengthen it. And whether you do it at the very beginning when it's square and it's difficult for you to cut, or you cut it when it's easy and short, and then spend a little bit of time reducing it out, well, that's kind of up to you. You may find one thing easier than another. I find it easier to do the cut and then just sit and just take a couple minutes reducing. Now, I'm going to keep reducing. I think this must be very boring. So uh, I'm going to continue, and I'm probably going to bring it out maybe that far, and I will be back. All right, so here we are. I've reduced it a bit more. Ooh, it's nice and noodly now. I could probably stretch it out more. You start twisting like that and pulling. and ooh, Feels really good. Alrighty. So, let's cut the ends off because as usual, it's sucked in. So I'm going to just cut some off. And I like this technique because these bits tend to find their way back into another Starry Night cane. All right, so let's cut off the bits to the end. It's just a little bit of distortion there. It's okay. Now, let me cut this in half. Take my ruler <laughs> it is almost four inches here is about two inches I think cut straight down all righty now this time I am going to go like that. So you just mirror image this puppy like so. And of course you check both sides. Try to go right down the middle like that. Oh, it's a little torqued, torqued a little funny, isn't it? So I'm gonna separate these. I'm going to try to straighten this out because they are kind of twisted. Okay, let's see if this is any better. I did cut kind of funny here. Oh well. So one side is definitely not as matched as the other. But you know what? This is the side that was mirror imaged. So this and this are the same cut. And that's why they match so well. Um, 
that will not be the case throughout, of course. Because the farther along you go, the more different the sides are that, uh, that meet. Okay, so let me square this off. going to reduce it a bit more, but it's kind of torqued funny, as you saw. So first, I have to try to restore the nice squareness of the piece. Do my best anyway. All right, now this I'm going to reduce, and I'll prob I'm going to try to reduce it to about 8 inches. Okay, could be a little longer, could be a little shorter. But I think that is my goal. Okay, now in other in other um, tutorials, you've seen me reduce. So I'm not going to take you through the whole thing. Because if you've seen it before, this can be quite boring. And if you haven't seen it before, then I hope you will check out the other uh, caning tutorials in which I have reduced a square like that. Okay, so I'll be back. All right, so I have reduced it and it is from one end to another uh, nine inches, but I didn't cut off the ends. And I just take the small slices until I reach a pretty good image. Now I will do the same thing on the other side. And there's no need to hack away big honking slices. Just work your way down. Okay, that's good. Now, what have we got? Well, we have seven and three quarters. So you know what? I'm going to stretch this out to eight. Looks to me like this part is a little thick, so I'm just going to stretch it out. All right, there we have just about eight inches. So I'm going to cut at the four inch then I will cut at two then I will cut at six okay so let's see what we have here now there are ways different ways to put it together what I'm going to do is I'm simply see I could put it together like this like this, right, which I think is fine, but I think I'll put it together like this instead. Now, bear in mind, if I were to reduce, If I were to reduce this new cane, this new square cane, and put it together, what would happen is I would also get the other pattern, right? When reduced pieces met up again. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so there is, now I'm not going to push it together really tight. I'm just going to take a piece off the end, like so. It's a good representation of it. Now, let's take this and take the pieces apart and form another cane. It's a zigzag. 
No, you've got what, four pieces. Now, the way the zigzag goes together is like this. So you take two pieces, and if you, you can see that what I've actually created is a diagonal from this corner here, this corner there. And that stripe down the middle, they're all running the same way. Okay, so let me do that again. I know this can be confusing because I get confused. Okay, so I'm taking two pieces and I'm just going to put it together like this, not like this. You see the difference? I've created that diagonal, except that the grain is running this way on one piece and this way on the other. So you have to twist it. This is what we had before. You twist one more time and you get a diagonal that runs through the two pieces like this, where the center, which is that nice stripe, that thick line that's running between the two, the grain is all going in the same way. And then on the sides, the grain is going another way. Now, as an option. I mean, you can play with the grain. You can make the grain. See, I still have that center, that thick band that runs between, runs through both pieces. But this time, that band, the grain is running with the length of the band. Here, it is not. All right. So let's keep it this way. Now, now to make this a zigzag, all you have to do is take the two pieces and put them together like that. And now you can see there's a zig, like so. And of course, if you're going to make zigzag, you've got to reduce it again and then put the newly reduced pieces together to make a zigzag band. Okay, so let me just take a cut here. And so you have these two arrangements using the same four pieces, okay? And I think I'll leave the zigzag. I'm just gonna leave it just like this and just reduce it just a bit. And I'm not actually reducing. I'm just trying to push them together so there's no air between the slices. I've got a hole in the middle there. So I may have to do some more pressing like so in hopes that I can expel or greatly reduce the size of that hole. All right, so those are just two variations that you can do just by turning. But the beginning is always the same, a diagonal cut, turn it to the back, reduce it, cut it, put them together, and then do one of these things that I just showed you. Okay, that or the zig. Okay, now I'm going to do a jelly roll because I did a lot of jelly rolls using this technique. And to make the jelly roll, I think I'm going to use this green. All right, so hmm, what do I want to do? Um, I'll use this elongated side, not the chopped up side. So I've got to thin it. And I start by just thinning with my acrylic rod because this is not enough length to actually make a jelly roll, is it? I'm just going to try to taper it as I roll. I go one side, then the other, and just trying to ease that clay to a point. Right. 
trying and um, not really getting that clay in the center. See, I'd like to pull that clay out as well, but I might not be as successful. But you know what? I would really like to do it, so I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to cut the clay from the top and the bottom. And now I'll try to pinch and pull that stripiness from the middle too. Okay. And hopefully I have done a better job than I did before. So this part, you're probably just gonna have to use your fingers and do a little stretching like so. Taper and stretch. take my rod and roll it back up this way from the point. I find it a bit easier that way. Just take it. If the clay is nice and soft, of course, you can stretch it with your fingers, just like you're reducing something, which in fact you are kind of reducing something. Okay. Now, for this particular jelly roll, I think I'm going to add a stripe. You know, that's kind of an optional thing, but I find it just even a very, very thin black sheet of clay helps define the swirl of the jelly roll. Not always necessary, sometimes for certain effects, you might not want that. You might something that has a softer kind of watercolor type of look to it rather than the swirl that is so defined. Okay, so let me grab some black clay. I have clay all over the place. Okay, here's some black. Actually, my studio looks really good today. I mean, it's less chaotic. Okay, let me roll. And I'm going to make this really thin. I do not want a very thick stripe. Clay, you know, I just grabbed it out of a bin that had black clay in it, and it seems a little cold, and it seems a little stiff. Now, I'm going to be taking this clay, putting it on here, and then rolling it up. I don't want it to crack, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it soft, because even if I make it very, very thin, and I put it on there, but it happens to be kind of stiff. When I start rolling, it probably won't stretch. And, and I need it to stretch. Ok, 
okay, it feels still a little stiff. So I'm going to add another bit and incorporate it, and then I'll be back. I don't think you have to listen to me rolling the clay through the pasta machine. Okay, so I softened the clay quite a bit with those two uh, additions of um, the conditioning, some of the, some from the conditioning uh, bar. And so I rolled it through setting eight. My machine goes to nine. All right, so let's just take this, and I think this is long enough to do a nice snaily swirl. I'm just gonna put it right on top there. I'll cut when I cut the sides. And I think I'm gonna refine this edge just even a little more by making another angled cut like so. All right. Now let's take this and roll and smooth the cut. Okay, so here we go. Da -da. Now I'm gonna take this and just kind of bring it up. Okay, oh, oh. like so. Actually, I'm gonna move it because that's a little awkward. Okay, so from the point, I'm going to roll it up. Hmm. Do I have too much black clay there? Huh. Might be a little too much. I don't want a black dot. That is not what I want. I do not want a black dot. and go kind of slowly so you know you give that for me I have that black thin black clay stripe I want to give it a chance to stretch because I'm asking it to make this kind of turn. I'm shedding. But before I get to the end, I'm going to take my blade and I am going to make a nice angled cut from about here to there. Not perfect on that side. But close enough, now I'll separate these. This will go back into the new pile of colors for new Starry, uh, starry Night Canes. Oops. So I'm just rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, now this, hmm, arg, I think it'll be better if there's no hard edge here. So I'm just going to take my handy, my handy dandy brass tube. This girl's best friend. 
can kind of curve it. You know, so I cut it, but I could just have easily tapered it with my fingers in much the same way I did that, right? And um, you might wonder why I did it this way. Well, honestly, I don't really know. I hadn't really thought about it. I just know I do it both ways, so why not? Okay, so let's take and slowly work it around. And I'm glad I softened that clay because I have the feeling I'd be getting cracks all along the outside. And I didn't want cracks. Okay. Oops. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have. Oh. I trapped some air. If you see air like that, just whoop, push it out. Push it out. Okay. And there I have a really cute little snail cane. I like it. I really like it. Okay. So that's it for today's tutorial. Just a few, what, Louie, just a few ways that you can take your basic starry night cane and create other canes that you can use in your work. So I have to let my dog out now, so I must go. Thank you for watching. If you've learned anything, if you've enjoyed your time with me, then please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, and I am going to continue. We are going to continue our journey with the Starry Night Canes. I'm going to be making more projects, probably pins and beads and all kinds of neat, neat stuff. So until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Thanks and bye. Hello, it's Donna again. I'm back. So if you've watched by now, you know that sometimes I leave and I come back. Well, it's not without good reason, I will tell you. Um, what I'm going to do is show you the zigzag again. Now we did that. Here I did a zig, but I didn't do a zigzag. But, you know, you can do a two color. And that's what we're going to do here. Do it with the yellow and with the green. Now, if you can see they're about the same size. I tried to make them as much the same size as possible. Now, each one, we're going to do the macaw cut from one corner to the other. You watch and cut and then you watch and cut and you watch and cut and you just walk your way literally down the cane set one aside because we're just going to use half now I'm going to do the same thing now I want to make sure that the grain is the same so I'm going to take and do the macaw cut again now, when I made the reddish peachy zigzag, uh, I want to show you, I had quite a bit of waste because this was the way we put them together. It's quite difficult to uh, reduce something this shape. It's really easier to reduce it smaller. So when I did this cane, I had like a ton of waste. Look at, see all that? 
just because it's a very difficult shape for uh, shape to reduce without creating a lot of waste. Then I did it again with the violet. You know what? I took each side, I cut it, and then I reduced each one separately. And to make to get this far, this is all I had in waste. Simply because it's easier, it's smaller, and it's much easier to reduce this out to length. So I'm going to reduce this out and this out separately in order to make this cane. But even when you're making a solid color, try doing it this way. You cut, imagine this is a solid color, you cut, and instead of doing this and reducing, reduce this and then reduce this and then put them together. Okay, so let me start the reduction. And I really think you're going to have a lot less waste if you do it that way, because I sure did. And it's easier to get to the middle of the clay because, well, heck, the middle is like right there. So you'll find that you do end up with a lot less waste after your reduction. It's easier on your hands, easier on your, easier on everything. Okay, so you can see how this is going. It is quite a bit simpler. You just have to do it twice. All right, I'll be back when I've reduced both of these. Okay, I'm back. I reduced the two. And by the way, reducing these two separately took me about half the time that reducing this together took. So, file that away. Okay, there's my waist. And here's my waist. Let me take off the green. Just a bit more. Let me turn this and let's take the waist off this side. Okay, that's good. So this is the sum total of the waste from these two. Now, let's put them together. So originally they were like this, more or less. Let's do it this way, like this. So the way to reassemble, you can see, I, I'm just matching the grain, it's running this way, is to Turn it back like so, just like that, and then bring it all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to push them together like so. Now, the green is uh, a bit above the yellow at that point. I'll trim it off. But first, I'm going to divide it. And what I have here is approximately five inches. So that's two and a half. Like so. And then I put them together like this. All right, so let's trim off that excess. Okay, here we go. There it is.
Now I'm going to reduce this out. Just cut a little bit more off of that corner. So I will reduce this out. I will aim for between 8 and 12 inches. Okay, so I'll do that and I'll be back. All right, so I reduced it out and I actually reduced it out to 13 and a half inches. So 13 and a half, 6 and a half, 13, yeah, about there. Okay, now let's put this together like that. So you remember, we have the diagonal. Put it together on the other side. Okay, now let's cut this in half. Oh, six and a half, three and a quarter, three and a half, three and a quarter, or three and three. Six. God, I'm terrible at this. About there. Okay. All right, now let's put it together. This side doesn't meet up quite as nicely. So you know what? I'm going to cut about that much off. I think I might be able. Well, we'll see. So, so far, the whole process, I have this much waste. All right. Now, this has to be reduced again because... Here we have, just like I did before with this peachy colored one, I have one zig. Okay, so I'm going to reduce this out and I will be back. All right, I reduced it, so let me cut off the ends. That's good. That's very good. So I just want to point out one thing. When I first made this cane, I had this much waste. It, it's about the same volume. This time, this is all I had. And some of this, you know, I was very generous when I cut away. So to do the same thing. And the difference was uh, reducing them separately, reducing the two parts, remember I cut, reducing them separately, and I wasted a lot less clay. Okay, so let's cut this in half, eight and a half, four and a quarter, four and a quarter, like so. So I'll put it together this way. Now I will cut this in half. And I have a zigzag.
so there you go. After doing the first part, I thought, well, I seem to have left something off, like how you complete this cane to make it, uh, to make a zigzag. So that's it. So now I really am going zigzag. Started with Starry Night Canes. So I hope you've enjoyed this little extra at the end. And oh, until next time, I'm Donna Cato. Bye.